Hi everyone, welcome to Sunspot. I'm Scott Brooks of the Waxahachie Sun and today I'm very happy to uh, have with me the mayor of Waxahachie, David Hill. David, welcome. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. As I mentioned before, um, and we'll mention probably each one of these, Sunspot is intended to be and will be really all about the city of Waxahachie. Uh, most weeks David will be here unless David wants to um, ask someone else that is over in a, a certain department or a certain task or a certain project to come in. Um, if that doesn't happen, then it'll be me and David, m the mayor, I should call you mayor, um, uh, each week. And, and the purpose really <clears throat> is to go deeper on the city of Waxahachie straight from the horse's mouth because there's so much out there with respect to social networks and Facebook Next door has become a big part of the the information process. Unfortunately, most of that information is inaccurate. So uh, we felt as a as a media company a responsibility to bring in uh, the mayor and uh, again whoever he would like to really share with you specifics about any given topic. You're welcome to write us at uh, you can write me directly at scott at waxhatchysun.com or info at waxahatchysun.com with questions or concerns or whatever and I promise you we will address them and the mayor who knows more about the city than than uh, most uh, can can share some insight so the plan is that this will be a weekly show and uh, send out on all of our platforms so that you have it so with that we're going to talk about just a number of things today and I'm going to do less talking and more listening, but uh, David and I do spend time together. I have great respect for the mayor. I believe he knows, uh, as I mentioned earlier, a ton and is very, very involved. One of the most hands-on mayors I've ever known. So uh, with that, um, we have elections about to, to, I guess, come and go. Uh, right now it's early voting. That ends next a week from Friday, I believe, mm -hmm. I and then so. Saturday the 1st is Election Day. As you also know, there have been several council candidate interviews that we've shared with you. I just want to get a take on, or a feel for your take on the election process, what you see happening, what concerns you have, that sort of thing. Uh, well, it, obviously we have an election coming, and um, that's part of our process. Mm -hmm. um, the, the candidates are all, um, I'm sure, qualified in, in uh, many uh, ways, all nice people. Mm -hmm. um, I just, I, I look at our politics a little bit different than, than a lot of people do. Um, if, when city council is um, uh, doing their job uh, and there's continuity, mm -hmm. um, then, then uh, that's good for the city. Right. Uh, if, we, if we continue to have turnover, uh, then uh, you lose a lot of that institutional knowledge that you and I have talked about in the past. Mm -hmm. You take a Chuck Beatty with 26 years on city council, five years as your mayor. Um, is he tired? Probably. Uh, is he older than uh, others? Yes, he is. Um, but uh, I remember the story of the hare and the tortoise when I was a kid. My mother read that to me. Mm -hmm. And uh, the little hare thought he was faster, and, and actually the tortoise won the race, didn't he? So, and that's, that's, that's the difference, I think, in, in the way um, council works, is that we're not into it for a, a sprint. Uh, it's a marathon. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you, if you want to get on city council or be on a committee or a commission, um, it's a commitment um, of, of 8, 10, 15 years of your time mm -hmm. because you can't learn my first two years on city council, um, I didn't make a motion. I didn't second a motion. Mm -hmm. um, I pretty much just listened right. and studied and right. uh, visited department heads to learn uh, to learn everything uh, that you need to know about the city, and right. have continued as it as it evolving in in uh, that kind of service. So you continue to study and and learn from department heads as to what is going on. So um, uh, there will be an election, and we'll have a. Uh, a, a change or we won't. Yeah, so. I mean, it's, it's really, the uh, best I can tell from where I sit and 
what I observe and how much we visit and other council members I spend time with as well, that it's really, a, there's never a point at which you're not learning something. It's always, it's, it's, it's continuous, yeah. Yeah, I yeah. mean, the, the budget, I don't know how many pages it is, yeah. but it's thick. thick. It's thick. It's thick, and there's a lot there. Yeah. And uh, <clears throat> I, I, with respect to being tired, mm -hmm. you know, we, I think it's a risk or certainly unfair to label anyone as being tired uh, at, as though that's a negative. Mm -hmm. uh, you can be 25 years old and right. sit on council, and there are going to be times when you're tired, I assume. You guys, I mean, how much spend, by yeah. example, how much time do you spend as a council person in this, as mayor yeah. and council person in this city yeah. on council stuff? I mean, but I, and I heard Mary Lou's answer, and I, and I was thinking, oh, my goodness, I'm going to have to put her back to work. But... Uh, <laughs> Uh, I just went to WPI meeting this morning at 8.30. I've got a U right now. I've got um, a comprehensive plan this afternoon at 5.30, which would be a couple of two-hour meeting, and that, those are just a couple of the things you do. And the rest of the day, um, uh, you're, you may be downtown talking. To, I'll talk to the judge this morning. We'll have another talk mm -hmm. this afternoon. So I'm here with you. Mm -hmm. uh, so, And that's, what is today, Wednesday? Wednesday, right. So we had uh, city council on Monday night. Uh, and uh, talking with COG and the Regional Transportation Commission, all that stuff that we do daily. Uh, I met with Michael twice yesterday on, on city business. So mm -hmm. uh, uh, for me, uh, this is constant. Uh, I get phone calls at night, I get texts at night, I get emails that I have to sit down and answer back uh, to people. Uh, Smoke-free people are wanting to do interviews and, right. and uh, pass ordinances. So that it's a continuous... Um, thing that I do as, as the mayor, and, and I was doing it on, uh, when I was just on city council as a council member, uh, I got engaged. Mm -hmm. uh, I walked the streets, I talked to the business owners, um, wor working with uh, through the COVID uh, situation and everything. And right. So we've been, I'm, I'm busy, I, I'm, and the rest of them uh, should be. Yeah, well, and, and so for our viewers, I, I just want to caution <clears throat> anyone uh, f uh, about using or allowing the word tired to be used as a negative. Tired just represents yeah. hard work, usually. And I'm tired at the end of the day, uh, and I'm sure most of you watching are as, too, yeah. are as well. Well, I, I think tired means you, you, you work hard all day, and then when you go home at night, you go to sleep. Right. So uh, that's tired, and yeah. you wake up the next morning, and, uh, and you're refreshed, and off you go. When I say Chuck is tired, Chuck's a little bit older than I am. I'm 73, so he's maybe a year older or so. Mm -hmm. um, but... Uh, uh, sharp as a tack, and uh, just when you think he's not listening to you, uh, the guy uh, unloads a bunch of uh, history right. uh, that, that most people don't even know. I was at Lions Park this morning. We were setting a new um, new restroom facility at Lions right. Park. Right. Uh, we've never had a bathroom out there at mm -hmm. Lions Park. We've always used port and potty or you went to, to a tree, okay? <laughs> so, uh, so, uh, so here we are, and I was talking to the people that were installing it, and, and, and they, they almost think, well, maybe you're just replacing and this is just a new one. Right. And I'm saying, no, it's the largest park in, in the city, 50 acres or so, right. uh, that thousands of kids have played soccer, baseball on, mm -hmm. and uh, the trail comes past there, and there's not a restroom out there. Yeah. So uh, we have two, two porta potties. Uh, so here we are, um, uh, and, and we just set up uh, one at Chapman Park, a new restroom over at Chapman Park right. yesterday. Right. Uh, so uh, stuff that we haven't had in the past shows up, and the new people here think we've always had it, yeah, and 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 we haven't, right? So um, yeah, I, I mean, it's city management and city growth is an evolution, and yeah, you what's what from where I sit, what's so um, valuable and in some respects incredible, but certainly uh, reason for our success mm -hmm. in this city is that. Uh, the evolution is being handled well mm -hmm. and effectively. And the, the key component of intuition to know where two or three or five years from now we need to be is important. Mm -hmm. And that is an element that no one here should miss about what's going on in, uh, with city council and with city yeah, leadership. We'll probably never get to all of your questions when you we'll start talking there. about this because, I mean, for years, uh, and, and people that have been here a long time know this, uh, we, we've We've uh, kind of slept under the shadows of, of Dallas. Right. And we've always, uh, Dallas has always said, you know, that they're south of the Trinity, and uh, we're, we're not uh, going that way. Mm -hmm. So uh, 
here they are. They're, uh, most of the builders are up in, in the Red River area now looking for land to build on. Right. And when they got there, they turned around and they said, well, you know, maybe we, we should go. Mm -hmm. uh, so they're starting to show up at our doors now and, and uh, buying properties and developing. Um, so the, the, the econo economy of Waxahachie uh, stayed stagnant. Uh, for years, it, j it just w went along with a $20 million budget, $20 million budget, $20 million budget, and that's the kind of way it was. And then it started going 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, right. uh, 35, 45, and this mm -hmm. year probably around $50 million budget. Mm -hmm. It didn't happen by accident. It didn't happen in a vacuum. Uh, there were Buck Jordans. There were all kinds of other people that, that uh, promoted walks at you for years. Uh, there was no interest, uh, but the word was out. Yeah. And uh, finally, the people started to come. Uh, people come to our city now to visit uh, for all kinds of reasons. But, uh, but it's it's been because of the hard work of of the Chuck Bates and Mary Lou Shipleys sure. and and uh, Kevin Strengths and even Mark Singletons and people like that that right. that have invested in the city for years and years and years right. and have caused that change. So uh, and, and when I'm gone, there'll be people after me that that mm -hmm. will continue the the charge promoting our community. Yeah. And the growth will continue to come. Yeah, and, and the last point on this, at least for me, is that, that I'm spending uh, enough time right now to, uh, to know that I'm serious about proposing uh, on s in some way, on some level, that we have a better, better system in Waxahachie for the transition of leadership. Mm -hmm. Right now, we just have anybody can throw their name in the ring, <clears throat> experience be damned, or knowledge be damned, or what have you, but it, there's got to be a system by which, mm -hmm. and, I, and I, I know we have Walks at You 101 and maybe some other opportunities to learn, but I'm talking about a specific, almost like a boot camp kind of thought mm -hmm. is to, to allow people to come in and, and weed through those people who, who want to go through it and really learn and then be prepared. Not everybody will, just like a boot camp. Some people fall out. But the idea of being able to have older leaders hand the baton off to mm -hmm. younger leaders needs a process. And right now, there's not, none of that going on. Younger folks just show up and want to want to run against folks who've been in office for a number of right. years. And it's just not, it's, I don't know what the word is, there's, there's not a transition to the transition. Well, know? there's, there's, no, uh, <coughs> there's no communication between those and them. Mm -hmm. uh, I've been on count. This is my eighth, going to my eighth year, uh, and I always tell people the same thing. If you, my, my phone number is on the website, on right. City Walk, I mean nine seven two nine three five twenty five forty four. Call me, and I will we'll get together and have a cup of coffee and, right. and talk about it. Right. Uh, I haven't had a, a single one of the people that are running right now even uh, reach out for that cup of coffee. Right. Uh, I would even buy it, mm -hmm. uh, or um, so. Uh, but we have commissions, committees. Um, th there's some of that stuff that um, that we don't even get applications for when it's time right. to reorganize the, the city government each year. Right. So I don't know where the complaints come from. I'm, I'm sure they're valid. Uh, they wouldn't complain if it wasn't a, a valid complaint. But um, you don't see – it seems like everybody shows up when there's election. Right. Uh, I, when you're sitting on city council on a dais, you're, you're looking at who's out in the, the audience, uh, and there's not a lot of not a lot of participation mm -hmm. um, out of the four candidates that are running right now that are running against the incumbents. Uh, uh, one has been there uh, several meetings now, right. but in the past <clears throat> year, two years, you, you don't see anybody. Yeah, so I it's I only election time when. Right. They try to gather a bunch of information real quick uh, to, yeah. to, uh, to be, uh, what I always say is they're a mile wide and inch. Right, yeah. You know, there was a, a few years ago, uh, maybe just a couple of years ago, three years ago, there was a, a guy running for, for one, well, he did run, actually, for city council. Didn't know where city council chambers uh, are. Mm -hmm. and, and that, for me, just as, and I may run a newspaper here, but I'm a citizen, that's scary that people believe that they're qualified to be a council person, and they've never, they don't know where, the, mm -hmm. where it is in City Hall, which means they've never been there. Mm -hmm. So I, I think there's enough concern that uh, over the next year or so, that a lot of energy needs to be put into making this transition right. better, just yeah. my thought. Yeah. All right, let's talk about what Waxahachie has become 
in, among other things, known for as a huge success is the hub, vaccination hub. Uh, you've been there from hour one till mm -hmm. now. Just tell the viewers what you've, I mean, what, and it's remarkable what's happened out there, and I thought you'd, you'd like to share a little bit. Well, I think from the very beginning uh, when we opened up our uh, EOC at the police station, right. we got notification that there was gun the governor um, put out his executive order and declared an emergency uh, when the COVID hit. Um, I connect dots a lot, so I always think God's involved in most of what we do, yeah. if not everything. Right. So here we have a police station with the EOC built into it. Which EOC with stands for? Emergency Operations Center. Okay. So, and it's a standalone unit. Uh, IT's in there, um, computer, obviously, and air conditioning systems and generated backup, all that's for an emergency. If everything else blows away, that building will be standing. Got it. So uh, we, we build the police station with that in there. There's no pandemic. Uh, we have no emergencies at all, but we just think, why you ought to now yeah. since you're building a, a new station. You're right. So we did that, and then um, somewhere along the line, Thomas Griffin, who's our emergency management uh, coordinator that we hired, uh, was retiring in one place and moving to Waxahachie. And we said, hey, why, won't you, why don't you help us get it organized? And no sooner than we got him hired, uh, the pandemic hit. So we're sitting there with a, a seasoned veteran that had been through tornadoes and everything up in Oak Villa, yeah. a fire chief, um, mm -hmm. so, um, and an EOC that we stood up. I was looking at the GIS map, and we start watching red dots and cases that are starting to uh, impact Ellis County. Uh, and then the vaccines became available. So um, hubs were starting to sprout up all over the state, and uh, we started asking if we could do it. Right. Uh, there was pushback at the, in the beginning. I uh, took some phone calls to, to some key people, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, we were able to stand up a vaccine hub here with Baylor, Scott, and White, and of course it's Ellis County. Right. Uh, Judge Todd Little was um, uh, integral in that as well. Mm -hmm. So um, to date, um, we've done probably 65,000, 70,000 or so out there at that hub. Um, volunteers, a um, hundred a day are mm -hmm. volunteering out there to make it successful. Baylor, Scott, and White is uh, supplying nurses and doctors and staff mm -hmm. as well. So what we're thinking now, that we've, we've pretty much uh, uh, shot uh, our uh, whole bunch of people in Ellis County. A lot of them have gone outside the county to get vaccines. Our, and of course our initial thought was if we could get Ellis County done, uh, th then we could get the herd immunity uh, here right. and uh, we'd be safe to get out and play again. Yeah. So I um, had phone calls last night, talked to the judge this morning, talked to Will Turner last night about it. Uh, we're at a spot where we're, th we're thinking we can um, finish up the first shots through the end of um, April, mm -hmm. uh, and then May would be the second shots, and then we could shut and it down at yeah. the end of May right. and would have done maybe 80,000 or so. So let, let's just, for kicks and giggles, say we didn't have a hub here. That's true. Where, where, where would we have to go, if you know? Um, where, where's the closest one? I think Tarrant County was probably Tarrant the County. closest possibly. Right. Uh, but you know, the neat, neat thing about ours being local, um, I think it's 39% of the people so far that have had their vaccines out there are from outside Ellis County. Mm -hmm. So the rest of them are our, our residents here. They've all said the same thing. It takes, um, by the time you get in line to the time you hit parking lot, go through, take your 15 minutes uh, to, in a recovery, and you're out back into your car is less than 35, 40 minutes. Right, if that. Uh, so... Uh, and this is double line cars coming in right. and uh, working it through there. So the staff, which are volunteers, which most people think it's it's professionally done. Mm -hmm. If it's professionally done, it run near as smoothly. Uh, our volunteers are, I mean, they're home people. Right. Uh, they love the community. So everybody that comes through there, I mean, whether it's the wheelchair pushers, uh, the clipboard cleaners, the traffic people are, are laughing, welcoming people in, telling me, telling people that it's going to be okay. It's it's yeah. a, you, as soon as you you'll be in, you'll be out, and and we'll get you out of this place. Right. So uh, that kind of atmosphere has helped that whole facility out there. And then a lot of the nurses uh, are local residents as well, and they work at our local Baylor Scott and White. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of been a it's been a, a family affair that yeah, that uh, sure. worked out real well. Yeah. But if you had to go to Tarrant, and we hear it from all these people that, you know, they were in the line for three hours, 
and finally got discouraged and, and just uh, pulled out of line and went yeah. looking for something else. Yeah, it's, it is, it's, so a it's been a good, remarkable. It's been a great, great for yeah. our community. I totally yeah. agree. Yeah, and yeah. the fun part is being there. Um, I don't do a lot. I, mean, I, I run around and I try to relieve people and, and uh, push wheelchairs and talk to people. But the fun part is listening to them when they come out. They all say the same thing. Thank you so much for doing it. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and when they get their second shot, they say there's some hope. Uh, at the end of this, yeah. and, uh, and they're very thankful for that. So, yeah. So it's it's, uh, it's a job well it's done. Been a good thing for sure. Yeah. All right, uh, we'll go from that success to uh, what has been a popular topic as of late, and that is the talking about transition, transmission, transition from the old trash bin. I don't even know if it's a bin, but trash system. Yes. To a new system. Yeah. Yeah. whereby bins are used. Right. And I know it's been the talk of the town in many respects. Yeah. Uh, I, I'm a resident and use it and have had no issues. Uh, is there, I just thought I would just let you share with the viewers anything you wanted yeah. to about trash. Well, trash is trash, <coughs> is, uh, trash isn't it? Yeah. Uh, well, the old way, uh, we put bags out uh, on what I, I think we did Mondays and Thursdays or Tuesdays and Thursdays, whatever it was. Right. So twice a week we'd put our bags out and they'd come by and pick it up. That's, that works well, but, but everybody, not, not everybody does that that way. They'll put them out two days before and the dogs get in them and, and mm -hmm. chew the bags up. So yeah. we had more trash blowing down the street uh, than, uh, than was necessary. So uh, when it came time for an, a new contract, uh, we took bids from people. Uh, this new group came in and said, look, uh, if we'll supply the containers, all new dumpsters, new trucks, and a whole new uh, business uh, and, and take care of your trash. Mm -hmm. So some of the homeowners associations uh, had to adjust uh, to accommodate for that. Right. Then some people don't like rolling their trash bin out to the street. Uh, and I understand that. I, I don't like pulling it out there either. But I only pulled it out one day. Right. Used to, I was putting out trash. You know, Mickey would wake me up. Just better hurry up. I hear the trash truck yeah, out. Right. So, <laughs> so I'm I'm still looking for something to put on, and the trash truck's coming. <laughs> so uh, this way, I, I can almost go. Uh, well, actually, I can go two weeks mm -hmm. with no more trash than we make at our house. Now, other places, obviously, uh, they may need um, to put out it every week, but uh, but it's it's worked well for me. I hear a few complaints, mm -hmm. uh, but some of it is uh, I don't have a place to put it. Uh, it's too heavy, uh, too bulky. But I'd say 90% of the people that I've talked to um, don't have a problem with it at all. If somebody has a problem. I, I read. Yeah, I know yeah, you do. I read all that too. And I'm, I'm, but, but I look at the same names of who's talking. Yeah. And it's really not. Yeah, sometimes it's the same majority. names talking about lots of different issues. Yes, um, yeah, can, so can be. Yeah, in this case it's trash. Yeah. If somebody does have a, a legitimate issue sure. with trash, is there, would you direct them? Just to call the city and I think everybody got in an instruction sheet when they got okay. their containers, mm -hmm. and all the numbers are on there. But if they can't, if if they don't have that, they can call the city. Okay, and just tell them we've got an issue with the trash, and they'll give them the right number, or they may be able to handle it, uh, you know, through staff up there. Or okay, yeah. so it's been in place for, what two or three weeks now, and yeah. uh, for the city, is it going as you expected? Well, I think uh, the, the, it's a new company, yeah. so the old company knew the routes, right. uh, and the new the new people. Uh, know 90 percent of them so uh it's uh, uh they they miss the street uh, but then they'll turn around and run okay. right back out and pick it up yeah the argument that i think in the beginning um from from a few was that it was going to tear our streets up uh they're just too heavy of trucks with the same same weight as what we were using uh that it was going to be too many trips up and down the streets they'd have to go up one side and down the other but they only pick up once a week right so uh, Kevin and I were talking about it one day, and Kevin said, David, if, if we pick up on Mondays and Thursdays, how many trips is that? And I said, well, it's two. And he said, well, so if I go up your street once and come back down it once a week, how many trips is that? And I said, well, that would be two. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so it was, he said, is there a difference between that two and this two? And I'm thinking, no, there's not. <laughs> it's... Uh, <laughs> It was might pretty, be to an uh, Auburn grad, but well, in, you yeah, know, in well, normal well, cases. It depends on, well, and if you if you got a GED, I, I'm sitting there thinking I, I barely got out of high school, and I figured it out <laughs> that it's it's the same amount of trips. Yeah. Um, and the automated deal uh, is good for safety for for uh, on several levels. Yeah. So uh, I I followed the truck the other day. I was just watching how the 
the thing senses where the trash can is, picks it up, and down. Is that what it does? I thought, yeah. how does that truck yeah. driver know well, how do, yeah, how that he's he in the precise place to pick up the trash yeah. bin? So there's a, yeah. like lasers yeah, or something. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. There's a sensor right there, and it, it figures out where it is and goes out and gets it and throws it in the back of the truck, uh, sets it back down in the same spot that it picked it up from. <laughs> and the guy drives off and goes and picks up another trash can. So. Sounds like a winner to me. You don't have a guy on the back trying to pick up a 200 pound bag of trash. Right. And, uh, and, and struggling with that thing, and then the trash breaking, and they're there for 15, 20 minutes picking up trash. Did, did the folks that were doing it before, were they able to stay on? Did, did some of them get hired by the new company, or do, or do you know? If, I, I don't you know if they know. did. Okay. No, I, I would imagine that uh, if there were any people that were qualified, they would probably yeah. have entertained that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right, cool. Um, Emory Lakes. Emory Lakes. So Emory Lakes, uh, for those of you not familiar, is... Uh, uh, topic right now, it's uh, city council has been dealing with it for a number of years, but it's been on the docket or on the agenda was on Monday night. Uh, Emory Lakes is a rather large development and many aspects to it out mm. off of uh, Brookside and 35 in that area. Right. Um, if if you haven't heard about it, then we it's it's at the very beginning. But I thought uh, there's no reason to get uptight about it if you haven't heard about it. If you have then uh, this might be a value to you, but I just thought maybe you could share whatever you'd like about Emory Lakes uh, with our viewers. Okay. Well, Emory Lakes, uh, I think 2005 was the first time that it came up. It was Kemp Ranch at the time. Uh, people were talking about developing it uh, then, uh, 2006, 2007. It was continuously uh, talked about. Mm -hmm. uh, 2016, I think, was the first time that Emory Lake, uh, the new name, uh, new owners of the property came uh, with a development. Uh, Planning and zoning looked at it. City Council looked at it. And we all said uh, it's, it's uh, too dense. Uh, yeah. uh, a lot of stuff on there we don't like. So for from 2016 to 2000, well, this is 21, right? So is. five years, yeah. we probably looked at it three or four times. Mm -hmm. uh, constant communication with the developer and, and Sean Brooks and our uh, uh, planning department uh, as well as city staff, uh, back and forth about what we wanted and what we didn't want. Mm -hmm. uh, planning and zoning, uh, they've, they've been an ardent uh, protector of the communities, mm -hmm. and uh, they say that's, that's unacceptable, we're not going to do that, that doesn't meet our criteria. So uh, we did good until uh, I think Senate Bill, whatever it was, 2349 passed, and, and building uh, uh, facades and things like that were changed. Uh, a lot of our power from the city was taken away by the, the uh, Texas uh, legislature. Mm -hmm. uh, so we all met and, uh, and re-engaged and went through another process of how do we get a planned development and a, and a developer's agreement made. So finally, um, uh, uh, PNZ voted the other night, uh, was it 4 to 2? 4 to 2. Two, two that voted against it, um, not not any good reason mm -hmm. to vote no, but yeah. but that is their uh, vote. And then it came to city council, and of course we passed it. Uh, what it is right now, all we did was pass the zoning of it, um, and and uh, the development agreement. Mm -hmm. So, do we think they'll be over there tomorrow breaking ground? They can't. Right. I mean, that they're still engineering. I mean, there's so much that has to go into a, a major development like that. But it'd be uh, a 30, 40 year project. Mm -hmm. um, multi families in there, some apartment complexes, school sites, a police department, fire department uh, right. that we're going to be building probably uh, next year, uh, mm -hmm. bonding it and getting it done. Um, possible uh, inhabitants of uh, around 30,000. Right. Over the next 40 years, mm -hmm. okay, not not in the next 10, right. not in the next five. In the next five, you may not even see any dirt turned. Mm -hmm. In the next five years, so it just, because of that it, it took us from 2005 to 21 uh, to get the zoning passed. Right. So now we start uh, the real work of trying to to actually get something that's a a, a buildable set of plans together. Yeah. So, so I, I think the message is that if if everybody just be calm. Right now, yeah. and there's no, there's no reason to yeah. be uptight. There's it, again, it's a long process, but uh, I think it's an example. This is an example of the mayor being able to share with you really where we are on a on a big project that will take a long time. So, 
Okay. And, and there's obviously, uh, we've got several people that live out there on um, uh, uh, Brook Bent, not Brookside, Brookside, right. uh, th that uh, are concerned about it. Mm -hmm. uh, the developer is, I mean, the developer's gone in and rerouted as a main entrance and given them a two or three hundred foot uh, a green space buffer. Right. Uh, so that they're they're not affected by the lights and the traffic and the noise. Right. Uh, plus, there's a 120-foot right of way for that street, so that's another 60 or 80, 100 feet that they're away from these houses. Right. So, uh, but even the topography out there, as you can see, the land goes down. Mm -hmm. And I went out the other day and I stood in front of Doug Barnes' house, right. and you can see the top of the trees. And if you know that's the top of the trees and the developments below that, there's a good chance you may not even see who's out there. Right. But they were, uh, you know, there was, and I understand that. People moved out on that part of uh, Waxahachie because they wanted to be rural and have some land to live on. Sure. Um, I think we all like that. Yeah. But um, Texas has a law, and it says if you own the land and uh, you want to develop on it, you have the right to do that. Right. So these people bought several thousand acres over there, mm -hmm. and uh, they have the right to develop it. Uh, the only thing the city can do work uh, is to work with the developer to make sure that we get the best product we can. Right. We would never be able to just stop it. Right, right now, it's, it's a future development, planned development already out there, so if they want to go ahead and develop it as is, they could do that and never even call the city except to get a permit. Hmm. But uh, they came in, they said, we want to build, we're going to be in your community, we're going to be half, half, of, your, yeah. <laughs> half of your community, and uh, we want it to, to be something that everybody uh, receives well. Sure. So they worked hard to get it to where it is. And, and, okay. uh, so that's Good. kind of where we are. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Uh, last thing on my list is, and I know you don't want to talk about this, but um, for our viewers, uh, the Chamber of uh, Commerce of Waxahachie every year has a banquet. Really nice event. This year it was uh, oversold out. I don't even know if that's a word, but uh, there were 450 some odd, give or take, some odd folks there, some odder than others. <laughs> uh, but uh, in years past has been in the 300s, so it was a big, it's a big event every year. This one was especially big. And in that banquet, there are awards that are given. One of those awards, the biggest award of the evening is citizen or citizens, in this case, of the year. The mayor won't tell you this, but I will tell you that uh, the mayor, <clears throat> David Hill, and his wife, Mickey, were honored this year as being citizens of the year. Uh, and I uh, not only am I grateful for that, I, I certainly concur, but I wanted to give David a chance to, to sh or the mayor, gosh, to <laughs> share with you what that means to him and, and uh, anything else you'd like to say. Well, I didn't really want to say anything. I know. <coughs> so, uh, <clears throat> but I told you, uh, the, the only thing I, I mean, in, in my life, the only thing I ever won was I won some uh, Mary Kay cosmetics. Uh, in a drive-in theater when I was about 10 years old. <laughs> so, uh, uh, and, that, and that was a big deal. I, I, didn't, I didn't use it, but uh, I, I thought, uh, how neat is that? <laughs> so, um, and I've, I don't do anything. Uh, matter of fact, I, I joke about it. I, I hadn't even told Mickey I'm mayor. That, I mean, I, I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm not, it's not, you hate to say you're humble, but I'm shy about that kind of stuff. Yeah. And uh, I just do what I do. Mm -hmm. uh, we've talked about show ponies and mules. Uh, show pony gets a picture taken. Everybody uh, talks about how pretty he is, but he doesn't do anything. Right. Uh, I'm a mule. I, I, I just uh, I rather grab a, hold, a load and pull on it. Yeah. So that's what I do. And um, and to be recognized uh, for uh, for what you do because of who you are I, is is neat um, in many ways. Mm -hmm. um, I told you about Mr. Larkin. Uh, yeah. I didn't know the connection in Houston. I worked for an oil fill uh, supply company in Houston. One of my favorite stops was Larkin Fittings uh, in Houston. I uh, met the guy over there, and, and I just loved the green and red colors and, and it was pipe fittings and stuff, and we, we had a good relationship. I didn't know that the home base was up here. So to know that he was one of the people that would have sat at that table had he been here right. uh, was uh, very humbling. But when you look down the table, uh, and you look at those people, you, you really don't think, you know why you're sitting at your table? Mm -hmm. It's because the city uh, reserved the table, right. okay? And, and we're servants uh, for the public, but when you look at the other table, you're just, I mean, you're looking at um, uh, people who, who the city have been built by. Right. 
on, in there. And, mm -hmm. and, and nowhere in my mind I'm thinking uh, that you deserve a place at that table, or mm -hmm. why am I not sitting at that table? Mm -hmm. You just look at them and say, wow, yeah. what they've done right. and what they've done. So um, you never think it's that, that uh, you're in that group. So I look at my wife, though, and I watch her, and um, uh, she has a serving heart. Yeah. Um, I, I'm, I, I follow her a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, she does Deer Day and, and things like that. She, she developed a little thing about uh, heart hatchy hearts, and uh, she goes to school and uh, finds a student that does random acts of kindness and, and, and uh, does kind things in the school district, and she'll take them to lunch, right. find out what their favorite food is. Mm -hmm. She seeks them out. I mean, it, there's no program, nobody pays for it. It's just because she feels compelled uh, mm -hmm. to go out and do that for kids, to, um, uh, to encourage them mm -hmm. to continue that kind of a life. Mm -hmm. So um, uh, serving on city council, uh, it's a job. I mean, so it's, it's, you're not doing it hoping that somebody's going to give you a ribbon right. or an award or call you up and say, hey, you're doing a great job. Mm -hmm. You just know that it's something that needs to get done. So I'm sitting, I was sitting at the table, and uh, obviously I don't know a thing. I, I'm <laughs> you're in the dark. My, my daughter, Laura, who I, I, I don't see often, is her son, uh, Luke, is graduating senior. Mm -hmm. And so uh, uh, James and Laura are serving because the parents of seniors serve yeah, at the that. chamber. Yeah. So my daughter is over my shoulder here giving me a piece of cake, and I looked around, and I said, Laura. So, so I'm, uh, Sandy's talking and, and announcing everything, and, and then Bonnie is up there going through the, the list of people who have, <laughs> who have come before me, yeah. and I'm, I'm talking to Laura about my piece of cake and uh, thanking James for my roast beef. And, <laughs> so, uh, and then they, uh, Mickey nudges me. Mm -hmm. And I said, "You need to turn around and shut up." <laughs> so, I, so I did, and uh, and then of course they they announced. And you, and you're not even when they said somebody's from Shreveport, I'm thinking, yeah. How many, "Who isn't from Shreveport, right?" Yeah, right. But um, so it, it was a, it was a, certainly a surprise to start with, and my kids know about it, yeah. and I didn't know it. So they bring my children up, grandkids, great grandkids. Yeah, stage full. Yeah, and uh, that, that was just a few of them. So if they'd yeah. all come, we couldn't get them on stage. Some yeah. couldn't get. Up there, but it was, it, it's 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 an honor, and um, uh, you don't take those things lightly. No, I'm glad it was a surprise, yeah. and uh, I think it was uh, certainly a uh, well-deserved honor. And uh, we will have in the Sun this weekend. We will have uh, it on page one, a feature about the mayor and his wife Mickey, who who you're talking about uh, outkicked his coverage. Uh, the mayor outkicked his coverage when it comes to. <laughs> to the wife, uh, she's a doll, so and we love her. So, um, anything else you want to share before we sign off? No, I just uh, I know that uh, Meg and I've been married 46 years, so um, uh, we, we've done a lot together, and yeah. um, uh, we don't uh, we're not separate entities. Right. Uh, pretty much everything we do is is um, our community and us mm -hmm. uh, uh, working together. So. Um, the wind beneath my wings is kind of an understatement, but mm -hmm. really, uh, uh, without her support, uh, there's a lot of things I wouldn't do. So yeah. I want to really thank her for that. But I think the city is uh, doing well, and, and I, I, I appreciate being able to come here today. Uh, I know the elections are going to be over soon, and um, uh, I'm hoping that um, what we have stays together so we can continue doing what we're doing. Right. If it doesn't, uh, we embrace the new people and, and uh, sit down at the dais and and uh, continue doing what we're doing. So um, I think with that, uh, that's pretty much okay. I'm okay. Well, thank you yeah. for being with us. Yeah. Again, um, this is the first of what will be many to come. Uh, we, some of these, these were multiple discussion topics, obviously, today, but there may be some in the future that are single topic shows, and we go deeper on them. But the whole point of this is to provide the city of Waxahachie with a deeper information source than what currently is available, whether it be with candidates at election time or with community leaders, in this case, uh, the mayor of Waxahachie, we have an obligation to make sure that the factual, accurate, authentic, honest information gets to you. Um, you got to watch it, obviously, to learn, but the idea will be to supply you with the, the right information uh, every single week. So we'll be back next, next week. Um, till then, remember, uh, early voting is going on right now. Uh, well, the, I don't think it's over the weekend, but 
it is all of next week. <clears throat> and then on Saturday, May 1st, is the election for city council, school board, and uh, bond, issue. yes, yeah. bond issues and Senate or House District 6, six. yes, yeah. for the late run, right? right. So right. Um, with that, uh, my name is Scott Brooks of the Waxhatchee Sun. This is Sunspot. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm.